hello guys raju here in our earlier uh, video we had seen the basic call types uh, that are considered when uh, the subscribers uh, do roaming in a different uh, countries or in different places or when they move out of uh, the home network so the possible scenario what we have seen is uh, in moc calls what we saw is that they can make a call back to home right back to home they can make a local call local call means within the roaming uh, zone they can make a call to the rest of world that is called the row is nothing but rest of world okay and uh, they can do some satellite calls satellite calls they can uh, do some premium related calls okay so this call services are based on what is been agreed between telecom operator a and telecom operator b so there there can be a situation that they will only restrict to a basic call uh, scenarios so that whatever this uh, special uh, call scenarios like satellite calls premium calls or uh, value added services that are not allowed or let's say emergency calls are not allowed okay this all depends upon what type of agreement that is being negotiated between operator a and operator b and uh, finally uh, what we saw was on the mtc call mtc call is what mobile terminated call so whenever you receive a call from irrespective of from uh, which part of the world yeah, after speaking after the job is done then you will terminate the call means you will disconnect the call so there is only one type of call scenario in mtc that is your termination call okay so for using this different type of services for using different type of services that what is the charges that will be levied by operator b on operator a and vice versa because subscriber from here can roam in this zone and from b they can roam in this zone right so vice versa that will happen so once that everything is finalized then the document exchange happens that document exchange what we had seen we had seen that as uh, iot document we in a telecom terminology we called it as standard aa 14 okay this is the document standard aa 14 is the document plus with there is a exchange of ir21 document which mainly consists the information related to the particular operator that uh, if you, in order they want to establish a connectivity then that connectivity details are referred by ir21 document okay so this is the uh, overall uh, uh, background of what kind of scenarios can be permitted now let us see that how this exchange of document happens and what exactly happens when we just uh, when there is a uh, situation that needs to be established between the two telco operators now what we have talked is about the a14 document and we had seen uh, talked about ir21 document so these documents are exchanged between the operators and once final uh, consensus is received okay then uh, they will decide upon that from when to start the consensus okay once okay uh, let me just take now consensus is received then they will decide upon that from when uh, we need to start the testing or when the testing needs to be performed and uh, when should be the go live date of the uh, network so for that what will happen there will be a exchange of uh, resources now what are that resources there will be a exchange of resources first we will see a traditional way in a olden days how this used to happen now let's say operator a and operator b let's say now this is in your india and this is usa okay now we are doing it a bilateral testing bilateral means here these all terms we need to remember because when we see in a telecom these all matters bilateral okay now bilateral means what subscriber from country a can roam into country b so what we are saying that subscriber from country a can go and use the services of country b and vice versa subscriber from country b can come and start using the services of uh, telecom operator a in india so like this so these are nothing but two way directional two way services are used that is called as bilateral uh, negotiation now in such a cases what will happen the sim cards 
will be exchanged because if you want to test then what needs to be done then the sim card has to be available and uh, the sim card has to be tested okay now what they will do or what uh, it used to happen in earlier days now these sim cards will be couriered to usa okay and vice versa the sim card from usa will be couriered to india to that particular telecom operator once the sim card is received physically this sim cards okay physically these sim cards will be inserted into the handset and once the sim cards are physically inserted into the handset then they will start making the calls but will that happen like that that you got the sim card and you will just start making the calls no it will not why it will not because for this particular sim card that network has to be enabled because you are testing it for the first time for this particular operator b right so you don't have any information now let's say you are testing in india you don't have any information of operator b that okay what type of signaling has to be established what is the network connectivity that has to be taken what is the channel that needs to be dedicated all those things will be there right so just by inserting the hand uh, sim card in the handset you will not be able to make any calls so for that what has to be done that the network configuration has to be completed so who will do the network configuration the network engineers will do the network configuration okay so here what will happen first once you receive the sim card the sim card will have uh, the unique number okay that is you are the sim card will have mz now these are the terminologies in means what international international mobile subscriber identity okay now this mc will be mentioned on your sim card now this mc consists of 15 or 16 digits okay now in india if you see mainly this uh, mc will start either with 404 or 405 okay now what this 404 and 405 is called now we'll just uh, try to understand the mc what exactly is mc 404 and 405 are nothing but these are the country codes we call it as cc okay so the olden uh, olden days operators uh, or the network uh, telco operators who were current uh, earlier established their mg starts with uh, 404 and uh, the new telco operators their mg series is allocated by tri is 405 okay now this is your country code huh? now after country code there will be uh, another code which is called as mnc this is mobile network code this is called as mcc mobile country code and mnc is your mobile network code okay what is the significance of this that we need to understand if we know that what is the significance of this then it becomes more easy for us to understand the further uh, lectures now let's say my mobile number is uh, for example 99000 25378 okay now this series this is my mobile number but behind if you see this has some mcc mnc and msin will be allocated that is nothing but this is complete my mc okay this mc do not change now let's say if you lost the uh, i am using the uh, mobile num this mobile number if i lost my sim card if i go and uh, uh, take the another sim card my mobile number doesn't change but my mc changes why because mc is unique you cannot have the same uh, number tagged again to that particular mc so mc is unique mobile number can be tagged to any other uh, mc based on the situation if you lost the sim card and if you are taking a new sim card with the same mobile number then this mobile number will be tagged to the new mc okay so mc is unique mm. and it is specific to the operator now how we can say specific to the operator we are saying mcc plus mnc network code this three uh, this five digits see earlier uh, for uh, operators who are already established the M mnc is of two digits and for the new operators the tri allocated as three digits so this is three digits now the total length of your mcc or mnc will be either 5 or 6 
So this five or six digits will indicate to which operator you belong or to which state in India you belong to which operator. Okay, how that? Now let's say you are taking a particular operator A in India. Okay, now this particular operator, now let's say if you are in uh, uh, Telangana or Hyderabad, Telangana. Okay, now this Telangana or Andhra Pradesh, they will have the unique series. This 404 and uh, the other uh, M MNC code. Now, once that MNC code, or once uh, let's say you are making a call, okay, now what will happen? This MZ, MCC MNC will be identified first and it will say, okay, to which operator you belong and from where you belong. As soon as it identifies, okay, he is from India. By looking at what it will identify, it will uh, look at MCC and it will say, okay, he is from India because this is your plus 91 it indicates he is from india and from india from where he is now let's say mnc it is three digits now that three digits belong to telangana airtel or uh, telangana vodafone or let's say idea or geo or any of the operator based on that what will happen that call will be routed to that particular mnc code means to that particular network operator or to that particular telco operator and the calls will be connected based on further signaling process that is again further a lengthy thing that we will see uh, as we progress on this so this is the significance of mz mz is what it is basically used to identify that to which telco operator you belong telco operator you belong in your country okay based on that the routing of the calls happens if there is no mz then you cannot route the calls and the mz is unique the mz is unique hope now you understood this one why i'm telling this because when you do the configuration in the network these are all parameter you need to consider uh, to where to route the call how to what all the services that needs to be enabled so everything is considered on your mz and to this mz the msisdn is msisdn is tagged now, what is that MSISDN? That MSISDN is nothing but your mobile number. Okay. So, MSISDN is tagged to MZ. Okay. And this MSISDN is your mobile number. Hope now till this is clear. Okay. Now, in our upcoming videos, we will see that how network parameters are considered for configuration. Thank you. Keep watching the my videos. You will get a lot of knowledge and please do subscribe to my channel so that you will get the updated uh, information as and when the videos are posted. Thank you very much for listening very patiently to the videos and please try to gain the knowledge out of it. Thanks.